Ibrahim Hanifa, keep in mind the upright in faith, the true in faith. And he associated not God with Allah. He sought and he sought and he looked to the heavens, the Quran tells us. And there he saw a flickering light, the star. And he said, this is my Allah. He said, he said this is my Allah. Has that, has, that, has that read me? He said, this is my Allah. But he looked and he looked until the star set. He said, I love not that which set. My Allah, the creator that I'm looking for, will never set. It will always be there. So he rejected that. A small, flickering light there in the heavens, which serves a purpose, as we know, for the navigators, the travelers. It generates light from within, etc. So it serves a purpose, and we know Abraham was a traveler, he traveled about. So I'm sure it meant great benefit to him. So rationally, perhaps he had some reason to look at something outside of himself as the creator or as serving great benefit to him. And even in that, it was greater than what his fathers and his people had made. For they had fashioned it with their own hands. And then it came to a point where they said, come, let us protect our gods. Can you imagine this? This is your God. But yet you want to protect your God. Somehow you want to protect it from Ibrahim and his life. But we find later that Ibrahim destroyed many of the idols. It shows how ridiculous that concept is. How ridiculous the idea of worshiping something that is creation, something of creation, something that you can make in fashion with your own hands. But nevertheless, it says Abraham, Ibrahim and his life went on. After the stars set and he looked at the moon, and he beheld the moon in its great splendor. He beheld its fullness, perhaps, in the heavens. And saying, this is my red bee. This is my Lord. And the moon having a great effect, as we know, on the waters and on ourselves, it lends some benefit. So he looked, this must be my Lord. And one day the moon set. And he said, I love not that one set. The Allah, the creator that I'm looking for, will never set. So he rejects that. Then it moves to the daylight. This is at night. His search began at night. Allah said he brings us from darkness to light. So his search began at night, at the star, at the moon. Then it comes to the day. And he beheld the splendorness of the sun. He beheld the splendorness of the sun there in the heavens. And what does he say? He said, has that rabbi, has that akbar? He said, this is the greatest of all. All the sun and its splendor, and as we know now today, the solar energy, et cetera, et cetera, and it strikes the earth, creating gravity, and it helps you to see about, and all of the great benefits of the sun. And he believed this was the creator, this was God, for him to bow and yield to. But he's searching, he's looking, he's seeking, he is a sincere man. He's a dedicated man. He's a man who wants to know what is true. But he was searching, seeking, and, we, as we, and if we notice it, the natural gradual progression, it seems like a natural progression. Because first he looked at a small light there in the heavens. A small light, the star appears smaller in the heavens. So he moved and he looked from a small light to a bigger light, the moon. It looks bigger. Then he moved to an even bigger light, the sun. And Allah brings us from smallness to greatness. Allah brings us from a simplicity to sophistication. He said he brings us from weakness to strength. So it's a gradual growth, a gradual development for Prophet Ibrahim. But he was looking at lights. And he and it was through the process, if we will, through the process of reasoning, the process of deduction, that Ibrahim eventually arrived at Allahu Akbar. They eventually arrived to see that Allah is not the star, the moon, or the sun, but Allah is the power that causes the sun to rise, the moon to rise, and the, and the star to rise and to set. That Allahu Akbar, Allah is bigger than all of this. And then he came to the realization that Allah is not the physical creation, but that Allah is beyond, and he is the master creator and controller of the physical creation. But it was through a gradual progression and through the use of the reasoning 
faculties, it seems, because through deduction, he moved from one, he moved from next, and he moved to the next. Now we know our religion, Allah said, call the people with wisdom and beautiful preaching. And we know in our religion that in Santa, that the man is a thinking man, that we are to think, we are to reflect, we are to ponder. And Ibrahim, we found reflecting, we found pondering. And then he began at that to ponder on, as Allah said, Zikrullah Akbar, which is the greatest. He finally come to a realization. And he think and he thought, and Allah led him and blessed him to find the true concept of Allah, of Tawheed. Now the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find the similar that he used to reflect in the cave on the condition of his people. And he was very concerned about his people and the state of his people. Why were they in such a state that they were in? Why were they worshiping these idols? What could be done? What must be done? Now Allah blessed him, rewarded him with the great revelation. Rewarded him with the grand Quran for thee, with the great light, the noble Quran, revealed it on his heart. The Prophet Muhammad was seeking, he was searching, but he too after the order of Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And some say of this midnight, this midnight, the way, the way of Ibrahim, the order of Ibrahim, the, the, the establishment, the structure of Ibrahim. Some even say the principle or the ideology of philosophy of Ibrahim, alayhi salam. So we see after the order of Ibrahim, we can see certain power, certain uh, 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 harmonious activities in both prophets' life. And we know Prophet Muhammad was the final fulfillment, was the final completion, was the final cap on the prophethood. Let me move on. And we find now after Ibrahim, alayhi salam, came to the great understanding that Allah blessed him with, he did not keep the knowledge of Allah to himself. He did not put it in his pocket. He did not just keep it in his heart or in his head. It said that he went to his people. He went to his family. He went to his father. He went to his community and tried to call them to the proper concept of Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he got the great revelation, the great light, that eventually he was told to arise and proclaim the message publicly and openly. Ibrahim, his people rejected him, and rejected him, and rejected him, and sought to kill him. They said, build up a furnace, and they cast him in the fire, and Allah made the fire a place of security and protection for Ibrahim, alayhi salam. But he came with the message of Tawheed, of oneness, and tried to teach it, and teach it to them. And one day, as the Quran says, that Ibrahim decided after appealing to them, to their minds, with the pure message. One day he came to where their idols were. And he said, and what he did was he destroyed the many idols, except the biggest one. He destroyed all of the idols except the biggest one. It said when their backs were turned, when they were not present, he destroyed all of the idols except the biggest one. And they said, when they came back, they said, who has done this? Who has done this? Who has destroyed our idols? And one said, they have a young man who was in the area speaking against it. It was Brother Ibrahim of Islam. So they bring him in, who has done this? Who has done this? And Ibrahim said, ask the biggest one. Or well, the biggest one that has done this. And they say, no, you know that he, he does not speak. Ask him, let him tell you. And they say, they were confounded. They, 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 they said, you know he can't speak, we can't ask him, but you worship that which cannot speak, or do you harm or good? And a, now when we look at that, and we think of the appeal of our religion, that is a rational tactic, a rational appeal. Not a, that was an emotional appeal, he challenged their intellect to think. You make these with your hands. You make these with your hands, but yet you bow to it. Now I'll see if we can answer you. And they were confounded and could not answer them. So they cast them in the fire. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when they came back into Mecca, to wrap it up, as they came back into Mecca, they destroyed the idols that were there in the Kaaba. 300 and some odd idols. Destroyed all the idols that were there in the 
compound. And these are examples for us. These are great models for us. And what do we see then as a model when we think of destroying these items? That we should have a commitment to destroy false items, false ideals, false ideals about our religion, false ideals about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, false ideals about humanity, that we should have a committed, a committed attitude to destroy these idols, these false concepts that are being conjured up by the media, that's being conjured up by certain Zionist manipulators that are trying to give the wrong impression, a misconception of our religion, false ideals of our religion. We should have a committed effort to destroy those false concepts and those false idols. In my conclusion, we find that Ibrahim, Allah blessed Ibrahim with the title of being the father or the leader of the nation because of his willingness to sacrifice his son Ishmael. Because of the willingness, so Allah blessed him, gave him the title of Imam of all the nations. Not of one nation, not of two nations, but the Imam of all the nations. The Imam of all the nations, not just over the African nation, not just over the Arab nation, not just over the Palestinian nation, not just over the European or the Italian, not just over the black nation, but he was made the Imam of all the nations. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last universal messenger and seal of the prophets for all of the people. Not just for the African, not just for the Arabian, not just for the Pakistanian, not just for the European, but for all of the people. Prophet Muhammad is the seal and messenger of all of the people. The Rasulullah for all of the people. And if we are followers of Muhammad, if we say that we are followers of Muhammad and we accept this deen, then our appeal, our dawah efforts, our concerns must be for all of the people. Our efforts must go out to all of the people. It must go out to the African, there in South Africa, under the regime, the oppression of the corrupt regime there. It should go out to the Arab. It should go out to the Pakistanian. It should go out to the Indian. Our religion is a comprehensive, universal religion. And with that, because I know I'm probably gone over my time, I'd like to wrap it up and close out and say, let us be sincere, let us look at some of the points that I've tried to make in the important role and significance of Abraham in relation to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Actually, he was doing well. You don't see me pull out the second note? I mean, he ain't in good shape. That second young pull up, then you know, you know, Alhamdulillah. We're so grateful to Allah. We also see that we get uh, more brothers and sisters join us as the uh, session continues. So, certainly, uh, this is a blessing, and we're getting a, a continuance of a very uh, eye opening perspective on the Prophet.